Jeff Todd from MLB Trade Rumors here. Today is Tuesday, February 11th. Let's get you caught up. It's finally officially official. No take backs. The Mookie Betts trade has gone through. Betts and David Price are indeed now members of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Half of Price's salary will remain on the Red Sox books, but the club is picking up a ton of financial flexibility. And in this rework deal, they'll also add some young talent. Outfielder Alex Verdugo coming from the Dodgers as was originally the case before the first transaction was scuttled. And instead of young righty Bruce Dargratterol, who was supposed to come from the Twins, and whose medicals gummed up the original deal, the Red Sox are going to get young infielder Jeter Downs, who's considered a top 100 prospect, along with young catcher Connor Wong. Now, neither of those guys is likely to step right into the Boston lineup from day one, but they will both be in MLB camp, and they should be options in the relatively near future. Verdugo, of course, will be expected to step right into that lineup, but nobody thinks that this is going to make up in the immediate term for the loss of two excellent players, including Betts, one of the game's very, very best. New Boston Chief Baseball Officer Chaim Bloom addressed the media yesterday. He acknowledged that fact. He said, we needed to make this deal for our long-term sustainability, even if we didn't need to get under the competitive balance tax, the luxury tax line, this is something we felt we needed to do, but there's no question that it makes the club worse in 2020. It's quite an interesting statement from one of the game's premier franchises. Meanwhile, one of the game's other premier franchises, the Dodgers, is picking up one of the game's best in bets. Yes, the Dodgers are going for it with this deal, but they also brought back some young talent in a separate pact with the Twins. Now remember, the Twins were originally supposed to send young righty Bruce Dar Gratterall to the Red Sox. His medicals gummed up the deal, but they didn't stop him from being involved in a swap. In the new version of things, Gratterall is going to end up in the Dodgers system, along with a competitive balanced draft pick. The clubs have also swapped a couple of young players, outfielder Luke Raley headed to the Dodgers, and catcher Hayek Camargo going back to Minnesota. Of course, the whole reason the Twins are doing this deal is righty Kenta Maeda. Now, it's easy to forget just how interesting Maeda's contract is. He's only promised about $3 bucks for each of the next several seasons. He can earn a lot more than that if he's healthy, if he's on the mound, if he's given innings and starts. The Twins are going to have a chance to manage that. They're going to have a chance to get a lot of value out of Maeda. At the same time, he can hope for more opportunities to max out the incentives in his contract than he was given with the Dodgers. That Twins rotation, now an interesting one to watch over the course of the season. It'll be buttressed by Rich Hill and Michael Pineda as the year goes on. Maeda will now step right into the rotation from the start. Let's not forget, though, there was another trade that was supposed to happen. The deal that would have sent Jock Peterson and Ross Stripling to the Angels. That deal is now completely scuttled in the aftermath of the first bets trade collapse. Is anybody else just exhausted trying to keep all that straight? We'll wait for our next story of the day. News emerged yesterday that MLB is considering a rather radical transformation of the postseason qualification process. According to Joel Sherman of the New York Post, the league is strongly considering moving from five to seven postseason teams in each league. That would mean 14 of 30 baseball teams get in every year. The way that it would work is the top overall seed, the team with the best record in each league, would get a first round bye. The other six teams would have three game series instead of the one game wild card play in format that we currently have. There are a few oddball tweaks. The top seeds would get to pick who they'd face. The games would all be played in one ballpark. After that first round, things would presumably proceed as normal. There's a lot we don't yet know about this proposal. It feels like something that might eat into the regular season schedule and could even see a reduction of games there. The Players Union says it really hasn't even been consulted yet. They're certainly going to want to be involved on this one. And there are a host of possible consequences to work out. At first glance, it seems like the kind of thing that would increase competitiveness, increase spending, and make the game more fun to watch. After all, more teams would be in the postseason race, more teams would be in the hunt when the playoffs get started. On the other hand, when you look at the sort of cost-efficient spending efforts that we see so much of these days, it makes you wonder if that's really how things would turn out. Baseball, a game of repetitive testing over a long period of time, is already being reduced to a different form in the postseason with short series. 
now the introduction of randomness would be even greater and only one team would be guaranteed a full series, the one with the best record in its league. There are definitely some interesting possibilities, but it seems to me there's a lot still to be worked through. But we still may not have touched upon yesterday's strangest story. Former big league pitcher Mike Bolsinger has sued the Astros, alleging that their sign-stealing escapades cost him a shot at future big league earnings. Bolsinger's last big league game back in 2017 featured a lot of trash can banging from the Astros and a lot of runs scored against him. He was dropped by the Blue Jays the next day. He's ended up pitching over in Japan. There's certainly some appeal to the logic in the argument, but crafting a legal theory, making out a factual claim, and testing it in court will certainly be hard to pull off for the 32-year-old. On the transactions front, the Diamondbacks locked up shortstop Nick Ahmed for the next four years, promising him a total of $32.5 million. That'll keep him under contract for three seasons in which he would have been a free agent. So it's another nice get for the Arizona organization, which has locked down the left side of its infield. Ahmed, really not even an average MLB hitter, but he is a sterling performer with the glove. He's won the last two NL Gold Gloves, and if you believe in him as a defender, then this deal makes a lot of sense. And finally, elsewhere in the NL West, the Padres agreeing to terms with outfielder Juan Lagares. Now, over the weekend, the Padres shipped outfielder Manuel Margot to the Rays in exchange for reliever Emilio Pagan, and other pieces, of course, involved in that deal. Now they've got Lagares sliding back in to take the place. Rangy, great glove, not so much with the bat. It didn't work out for him with the Mets, but he'll have a chance of cracking the roster in San Diego in camp. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to subscribe below.